Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Ball Fake Podcast. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure to like, subscribe, and support our new movement by putting Let's Go Viral in the comment section. But if you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, make sure to give us a five-star rating and a nice review. But without further ado, here are your hosts, Nicely Chunga Benny and Greg King. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Ball Fake Podcast, members of the Off the Ball Network. And in today's episode, we're going to be talking about DeAndre Ayton coming back to Phoenix on a max contract. We're going to talk about the fit of the team and, you know, some of the positives and some of the few concerns that I have for this team for the foreseeable future. But before we get started with today's episode, if you guys are new to our YouTube channel or listening on any other podcast streaming platform, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to our YouTube page. And if you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, make sure to give us a five-star rating and a nice review. Review. But besides that, let's get started with today's episode because DeAndre Ayton is now returning to the Phoenix Suns on a four-year, $133 million max contract. Now, my initial thoughts when, you know, DeAndre Ayton agreed on a four-year, $133 million max contract earlier in the day with the Indiana Pacers, I thought it was probably in their best interest for the Phoenix Suns to obviously bring DeAndre Ayton back, just given if you try to pursue a sign and trade, you know, you weren't really going to get that many assets that you really adored if you're, you know, the Phoenix Suns. Ideally, you know, Miles Turner, he would have been a decent fit, you know, playing alongside Devin Booker, Chris Paul, you know, the rest of this unit. But there was a good possibility that he could just be a one year rental. Outside of that, you know, there really wasn't any other alternatives for Phoenix. You know, I think it's in their best interest to keep this team together, right? You know, this is a team just in the past two seasons, make it to the NBA Finals in 2021, losing the second round in 20. 22 obviously but you were one game away from the western conference finals on top of that this was a team that had an 18 game win streak had a 64 win season could you know possibly find themselves in a conference finals given a little bit of luck and depending on what matchups they obtain over the course of next year's postseason that being said we already understand what we're going to get from deandre Ayton and phoenix you know he was their defensive anchor you know held things down from them on the defensive end you know covering up a lot of guys mistakes and you know just erasing a lot of shots being a little bit of a rim deteriorant to a certain degree right and offensively i think you know in in particular matchups you know deandre Ayton, he, he can give you a little bit of production right we saw it in the clippers series last year on their way to the nba finals on top of that you know let's say they've surpassed the dallas mavericks last post season you know what what are the chances of them possibly you know being able to get past a team like the golden state warriors maybe deandre ayton is the x factor in that series going up against kevon looney who we know isn't the best defensive player in the entire world and i think DeAndre Ayton, he's a formidable offensive player that I think can take advantage of some of those matchups. You know, him and Chris Paul in the pick and roll last year, one of the better duos in the NBA from that instance, right? And I think, you know, it just made a lot of sense for the Phoenix Suns to bring DeAndre Ayton back. Despite, you know, a little bit of an overpay, you know, 133 over the course of four seasons, he's going to be getting around $30 million on average. But, you know, with that being said, this was a move that needed to be made. Now, I think the big concern with Phoenix is that it's going to be really tough keeping this core together after a season here or two because you know jay crowder he's gonna be a free agent in no time same thing with cam johnson i think cam johnson is a guy that's more than likely gonna find a a different destination because i just don't think that you know phoenix is gonna have the ability to you know pay him whatever his market value is gonna be around his free agency you know he's been doing a really good job in in the terms of his development you know he's one of the better three and d prospects in the entire nba really really valuable secondary guy who can give you adequate started minutes if need be and on top of that you know he's got some really good intangibles that I think, you know, would have a lot of general managers, you know, salivating at the mouth. That being said, you know, Cam Johnson's future Phoenix, it's probably not very likely. And then on top of that, a guy like Jay Crowder, you know, there could be a possibility of him, you know, possibly going to a different designation as well. You know, right now he's making about $10 million a year. You know, I think at the end of this season or either next season, he will be an unrestricted free agent and, you know, possibly depending on, you know, the overall fate of Phoenix, you know, what they look like this season. Uh, there could be a possibility that, you know, Jay Crowder ends up having a little bit of a higher demand and, you know, decides to go elsewhere. That being said, in the event of those type of things happening, right, you're going to have an aging Chris Paul. He's currently 37 years old, not getting any younger. And we know Chris Paul to have a few playoff stinkers over the course of his career, right? You know, and that, with that being said, you know, he is a guy that we understand will, you know, probably have a pretty adequate season next year. As far as him being an MVP candidate, that's definitely not going to be within question. But I think the real problem with Phoenix is going to be, you know, their money's going to be tied up a little bit. 
you know, you, you just paid Michael Bridges. Devin Booker just got his max contract. Now DeAndre Ayton, you know, you guys just matched his money with 133 over the next four seasons. What does the rest of the supporting cast look like? You know, is it a bunch of, you know, average to subpar role players that don't really move the needle? More than likely, right? And I think, you know, more importantly, with the declination of Chris Paul arriving at the door pretty soon, it's going to be really tough for Phoenix to stay towards the top of the Western Conference, just given, you know, we're seeing teams like the New Orleans Pelicans really start to make leaps. You know, they were a team that wasn't supposed to make the postseason last year. You know, they got in thanks to the playing tournament and, you know, the Los Angeles Lakers, you, you know, just kind of folding towards the end of the season. But, you know, Zion Williamson, he's going to come back 100% healthy. CJ McCollum is going to be at the helm of their offense as far as a lead guard. And Brandon Ingram, we're continuing to see, you know, great things from him as far as, you know, his overall development. He's starting to mesh into that role of a star player, right? And, you know, I think, you know, New Orleans has done a really good job in terms of, you know, the, the assets that they got over the draft in the last couple of seasons with Dyson Daniels this year, Trey Murphy last year. And then not to mention, you know, some of those other guys on the roster like Herb Jones and Jackson Hayes who are going to continue to develop as well and let's just look at the western conference top to bottom right because you know we got teams like the golden state warriors who are fresh off an of nba championship right they ideally still have a little bit of questions as far as like who's going to be coming back they already lost gary payton the second Otto porter jr is going to be gone as well jordan Poole and andrew wiggins there's questions about whether or not both of those guys will be able to return if not one of them because the overall market value for those two guys has definitely increased after their championship win this past year and we got to look at teams like the Los Angeles Clippers that have, you know, basically been right there, but have had, you know, a few injuries and, you know, a few slip ups kind of derailed them from really making it to the NBA finals. Right. And I think this is a year where the Clippers, you know, ideally, I think they have a pretty formidable roster. You know, Reggie Jackson is going to be one of the better backup point guards in the entire league. John Wall is going to be a tertiary option within your offense going up against the third best defender that the opposing team has to offer on a nightly basis. I think he's a guy that's going to have a lot of success from that standpoint and dare I say he could still be playing at an all-star caliber level next year right you know given he's been training for a year now down there in Miami and you know just been taking care of his body and things of that nature obviously there's going to be a little bit of question as far as like where his athleticism ranks and things of that nature right and his conditioning what his exact role is going to be within you know the Clippers offense which I think the majority of us have a pretty good idea of that but you know you never know what Ty Lue has under his sleeve but you know with all those things being said and I didn't even mention teams like the Memphis Grizzlies who are going to continue to rise with John Morant, Desmond Bain. Look out for him. He could possibly have an all-star caliber year this year. You know, it's going to be really tough for Phoenix to kind of stay afloat towards the top of the Western Conference, right? And I think Phoenix, there's a real shot that Phoenix could be experiencing what the Utah Jazz have just experienced. Them already hitting their ceiling, not really having much wiggle room to really make any moves that are going to change the overall dynamic of the team and things of that nature. And, you know, Phoenix, like the Utah Jazz, could find themselves in the situation their overall championship window is going to be a really short one just given the overall trajectory of where some of these other teams around them in the western conference not even mentioning some of some of the teams in the eastern conference are going to look like heading into next season that being said let's talk about the pacers just for a brief second because you know they were a team that did obviously show some interest in deandre ayton and i thought indiana joining the conversation it, it made a lot of sense right you know you have tyrese halliburton already buddy healed we don't know if he's going to be a fit long term in indiana depends on you know i guess how him and rick carlisle mesh as a tandem but overall indiana was looking really really promising had they brought in deandre hagan and you know this is a team that hasn't been as willing to spend money on you know particular guys just given you know they don't have as much wiggle room to you know go deep into their pockets like other organizations and things of that nature and you know this is a team that was kind of in a desperate situation right they ranked towards the bottom of the league in terms of fan attendance last year and not to say that deandre ayton was a guy that was going to put fans in the seats or anything like that but i think you know if you're indiana it made a lot of sense to you know try to go all in on a player like him just because you know he fits the overall dynamic of you know a rick carlisle type of offense where you're going to have multiple ball handlers and one big inside who can kind of you know clean up around the glass and defend and you know co cover up some of the mistakes that those little guards are going to have and then on top of that tyrese halliburton definitely probably would have elevated you know a guy like deandre ayton's game just because because, you know his play style was so far beyond his years and he's just that talented you know and it would have really been nice to see the, those two guys grow in indiana and who knows maybe next year there's a possibility that you know uh, multi 
team trade, you know, depending on, you know, if there's a, another star that asks out, because we see that happen in the NBA a lot, obviously with Kevin Durant and Donovan Mitchell and being those two stars as of right now, I don't know, maybe Aiton finds himself in a situation where he's heading back to Indiana because, you know, uh, obviously this year it's going to be tough for, you know, Phoenix to make any trade acquisitions for him just because I don't think that there's going to be too many teams that are going to be willing to take on that contract for him to begin with, right? And, you know, that was kind of the whole reason why Phoenix was kind of like, okay, we're not going to offer you a max contract last offseason. We're going to have you kind of bet on yourself and try to play into that contract, you know, this year just because they obviously knew there wasn't going to be that high of a demand for the DeAndre Ayton market in terms of him asking for top dollar. So strategically, things worked out for Phoenix because, you know, they were able to retain DeAndre Ayton due to them being able to match the max offer sheet, which was the biggest in NBA history. But uh, things didn't go entirely as they wanted just because, you know, they obviously wanted to avoid paying, you know, DeAndre Ayton that caliber money, right? And like I mentioned, you know, he's kind of ranking up there with guys like Devin Booker. At least for these next couple of seasons, you know, Booker's going to be on a 200 plus million dollar contract over the next few seasons. Obviously, DeAndre Ayton isn't, but, you know, starting next season, you know, both of these guys are going to be getting subpar $30 million a year. But hey, you guys let me know what y'all think about this here in the comment section. Thank you guys so much for tuning into another episode with me here on the Ball Fake Podcast. If you're new to our YouTube channel or listening on any other podcast streaming platform, make sure to give us a five star rating, like, comment, and subscribe, turn on post notification, and give us a nice review on all podcast streaming platforms. But besides that, it's your boy, Nicey Chungabini. You're listening to the Ball Fake Podcast, and we out. Praise God.